Good morning. So good to be with you and thank you for allowing us to come into your home this Sunday, October the 11th. Now, right now, I want you to do a couple things. I want you to go ahead and type out a hello, a greeting to everyone that's in this feed because right now, our online campus pastors, John and Crystal Richards, are right here live every step of the way. They'll be here to answer any questions as well as you can reach out to them for prayer requests as well as they'll update with information about scripture verses and what we're talking about today. Now, I want to, before we dive into our worship and message portion of our service, to share with you a little bit about this rice bowl. So this bowl right here, our children work hard each month filling it up with nickels, dimes, quarters, and dollars. Because we as a church will then take a portion of our giving and match that so we can have a greater impact for orphans around the world. We've teamed up with rice bowls to be able to feed orphans all around the world. And so later on in service this morning, you'll have an opportunity to give financially. And we want to share with you a little bit about what your financial giving accomplishes. Again, thank you so much for allowing us into your life as Journey Church at Home. Now, let's get ready to worship. Good morning, Journey Church at Home. Thank you so much for being with us today and worshiping with us. Now join us together as we praise the one thing that never fails us, the one thing we can always count on is our God. I don't 
All right, church, thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. It's been really good. And also, we're going to continue on our worship in a form of tithe and offering. We believe this is a very important uh, essence of worship because you're saying, hey, I trust you, God. I trust you with what you've given me. And I have the faith to believe that you are who you say you are. And I, that, I'm also believing in you so much that I'm going to do is according to your word, and I'm going to give back a portion of what you've given me that you could use however you see fit to further your kingdom, to meet the needs of those out there. A lot of them, I have no idea. I don't know who's hurting, who's struggling, or what's out there, financial burdens. But I know I have a heart as a Christian to want to give to those. So, Lord, I'm trusting you with this act of worship to be able to meet the needs of someone in our community or around the world that you see fit. Lord, we thank you for that. So we're going to pray over our tithes and offerings, and then we're going to get back into the Word. All right? Lord, we just thank you so much for today. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this uh, heart of giving that you've given us. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for, for being such an amazing God and taking care of our needs, for providing for our needs, Lord, providing for our families, Lord, and uh, helping us to be uh, mindful of the things that you've given us, Lord, to be good stewards. Lord, part of good stewardship, Lord, you've asked us to give back a small portion back to you. Lord, we call it the tithe, the 10 percent, Lord. And I ask, Lord, that you just take this token, Lord, and you do it as you see fit, Lord, to meet the needs that we just spoke about, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you bless it. Lord, bless the giver and bless the ones that can't give, Lord, that one may they will. Lord, we thank you so much for all you do. Amen. Thank you, church, for your kind, kind hearts of giving. And I want to encourage you as you give. There's two ways that you can give, and that is through giving online, safe and secure, or feel free to mail in a check. And both of those are on your screen, give you an opportunity to get your giving ready. And while you do that, I mentioned earlier about rice bowls. Here is what we as a church support because of your faithfulness. This is Violet and her husband, Abraham. And these are the children they call their own. Before Violet and Abraham took them in, many were abandoned, abused, and malnourished, fighting for survival on the streets. Violet saw something special in them. They had so much potential. But if she and her husband didn't help, the children might not make it. So she took them in and loved them like they've never been loved before. And the children began to grow and get stronger. As they grew, so did their appetites. Which created a big problem. To make matters worse, when it rained, raw sewage flooded the rooms where the children slept. They needed to move, but all their money was going towards food. Fortunately, Rice Bowls partners with loving grassroots children's homes around the world to cover 100% of their food budgets. Rice Bowls started over 35 years ago using a plastic piggy bank in the shape of a bowl of rice to fight world hunger. Today, we have even more bite-sized opportunities for people like you to partner with children's homes to ensure thousands of orphaned children enjoy delicious, locally sourced meals every single day. By removing the financial burden on these homes, you enable them to focus on loving, teaching, protecting, and providing for the children in their care. Every one of the kids we serve is a hero who has already overcome so much. They have the potential to make a real difference in the world. Let's give them a boost. Welcome to Journey Church. Our church exists to help people find God, experience freedom, discover their purpose, and make a difference. If you have any questions about Journey Church, please visit us at OurJourney.tv. Now, here's Pastor Vince Sparrow and Pastor Will Groskopf. Well, good morning. This is part three of our Engage class which is a move to embrace. I'm here with our associate pastor, Will Groskopf. And over the last few weeks, we've kind of helped us understand our vision, mission, and purpose as a church. Now, part three, a, a, a move to embrace. 
we believe as a church that everyone kind of, when looking for a church, they start with step one, which is kind of explore. And hopefully as they're exploring, checking out websites and DNA of a church, they're visiting, they're checking out what the church has to offer. It hopefully moves to step two, which is enjoy. And then as they are enjoying their time, they're enjoying the presence of God, they're enjoying what all the church has to offer, they move to what we call step three, which is engage. Finding out what the partnership, membership, theology uh, of the church is, and then move to four, which is embrace. Making the church your church for being a part of the body of Christ. So we believe this process, this four-step process, leads us to becoming what we call here at Journey Church a partner. And so many churches have what's called church membership. We here at Journey Church have that, but we call it partnership. And the reason why we call it partnership is because church membership in the Bible has lost its true understanding. In fact, today, membership is viewed as nothing more as simply having a social club status. Mm. You know, I go to that church, I'm, I'm, I'm a member of that church, but maybe they've not been there for many months. That's right. And so all of us have a worldview that we filter things in, and, and, and health clubs and, and, and video rental places, grocery stores, country clubs. It, uh, unfortunately, what's happened is mentally, we've processed that same mindset with the church. And so instead of using a cultural definition of membership, we want to use a biblical definition of membership, which is called partnership. And so men membership in our culture typically means you pay the going rate and then you get a lot of benefits. I, mm -hmm. I'm a member of Sam's Club, and so I get a lot of peanut butter for discounted price. But when it comes to a biblical worldview, and when we filter getting the worldview out of our heart and putting God's word in, it always leads to partnership. So, so partnership means biblical membership. That's right. And when we talk about biblical membership, let's, uh, we're going to do like we always do. We're going to refer to the Bible and see what the Bible says about it. So what it says is uh, if you go to uh, John 13, which is a uh, uh, verse of Scripture on 34 and 35, it says this. It says, a new commandment. This is Jesus is speaking. He says, a new commandment that I give to you, that you love one another even, if I, even as I have loved you. But by this, all men will know that you are my disciples. For your love for one another. Now, this kind of love he's talking about is servanthood love. It is action. That action is a partnership. It's what's like becoming a family, and that's what we're going to talk to and talk to you about right now. What the difference is between membership entitlements and partnership as a family. That's where we're trying to go go to. Like he's saying, we should see a progression from the first lesson all the way to now of now, like we said, you're moving from that four-year experience and now you're moving to the kitchen, the kitchen. This is where family takes place. So what you're doing is like the world would tell you that membership means you're receiving. It's it's more of a give me, I pay my dues, give me. It's being served. It's I have my rights. You know, all these things. I'm entitled to this because I've got the gold star membership and not the right. aluminum can membership, you know, <laughs> that kind of stuff. And it never ends. You know, it's one of those things, as long as I got my, my um, uh, bank card on file, you're going to keep renewing it. You know what I'm saying? Like that. And then you end up with this never ending list of expectations. So what happens is you feel like now you're entitled, but you also keep gaining entitlements as it goes on. Right. And the new never wears off like that. The problem is, is it's a, it, it creates an environment of selfish acts. Selfish acts. Well, as Christians, we're not called to be selfish. As a family of God, we're not called to be selfish because a family is stronger together when they all do their part. So with right. a partnership, the part of partnership is everyone's going to give. Everyone's a giver. You give, yeah, not just your time, not just your tithe, but also your time and your talents. And, and you know, you you give of yourself to the church for the benefit of all. You serve. That's how that's how you give of that. You're serving. It's not just saying; it's serving. Then you end up with responsibilities. And responsibilities, what that really does, it gives you ownership. You feel like, hey, look, not only am I a part of this, but I have I have a part in this. Right. That right there is a big key when you move into, into that part of the deal. When you got responsibilities, you take ownership. 
And so that's pretty nice. And even though we know it's all God's and we know this, that it's, it's the church, and it, you know, but we have an ownership. We have a, a responsibility. It's just like no, no different than growing up when you had your bedroom. It wasn't your house, but you took care of your bedroom. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's the same thing. And then sacrifices. You know, sometimes, you know, when, when it comes to a family, not everybody wants to work really, really hard. And a lot of times that responsibility is going to call, fall on a parent. But they know. But everybody in the family knows, hey, look, there's still other things that has to be done. We can't put all that weight on mom and dad. So we're going to sacrifice our time. We're going to sacrifice some of the things that we want and desire so that the whole family is able to grow and accomplish more. Plus, it's unconditional. It doesn't matter if if you could only give this much time or that or it doesn't matter if you only have this much to give financially. It doesn't matter if you only have this kind of talent. It doesn't matter if you can't preach or you can't teach. It's unconditional. Partnership in the church is, hey, you are valuable for who you are. And then also, it's a cheerful gift to God to know that you can be coming here as a family member and then be a joyous fi family member in a joyful family. Now, when it comes to joining a church and becoming a, a partner of a church, a biblical member of a church, there are some questions that people uh, need to be asking, uh, and as well as there's questions and concerns of why people typically don't join a church. And so I want to give us some answers to the most common questions I've encountered. And let's start with the first one, and that is, why do people reject practical church partnership? Now, there is a long list of reasons. I don't think we can just put it down to one reason. But, um, you know, I think some of the reasons are people are afraid to be hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, they got hurt at the last church, and they're afraid they're going to get hurt again. Second reason why people don't want to join a church is because they think it's legalistic. But the truth of the matter is, there's far greater legalism in people's not joining the church than there is actually joining a church. Uh, a third reason why is people do not believe it's scriptural. But we just read one verse this morning from Pastor Will sharing about how it's important to be part. And the Bible's filled with scripture verses about being part of something greater than yourself. That's right. Another reason is maybe they themselves are not submissive. I mean, when you join a church, you're saying to other people that I can't do life alone. I need your help. And that means you're going to allow people to speak into your life to say, you know what, you need to not post those things on Facebook or, you know what, you need to stop treating your husband or your spouse that way. You need to stop. And so when you invite other people to hold you accountable, some people struggle with that. There's also something that we all have, which is a desire to self-govern ourselves and um, and what happens when we don't allow people to speak into our lives, it can create lawlessness. Mm -hmm. I think all of us would understand the type of turmoil our nation is in by everyone wanting to do their own thing. Yep. Some people struggle with not wanting to come under correction and receive direction. I mentioned that earlier, that when we open ourselves up to be in a part of a bigger picture, it means that we are going to t have times that we receive correction. Even myself, Pastor Will, all of us, we need that in our lives. And then another reason, last reason, is people simply don't want to be committed to something that is visible. And what I mean by that is we've all heard the terminology of, you know, I don't need to go to a church as long as it's just me and God and Jesus, we're okay. But the truth of the matter is, you and I need to be committed to something visible while we worship an invisible God. All right. So the second question, the second common question is, is it scriptural to have some kind of church role or record of partnership? Well, it absolutely is, because God himself keeps a role. If he does this, then there should be no problem for us as a natural expression of his body to do the same. And that's just the truth of it. Whatever God does or whatever the Bible says, that's what we should be doing too. Another question is, well, what about the practicality of church partnership? How does that actually help my spiritual growth? And so just as many 
times there's excuses not to join a church, there's just as many reasons to join a church. Here's a few. Partnership means that we are all necessary parts of the whole. Right. Partnership means that everything we say and do is based on biblical foundation of love. Yep. Partnership provides security and protection from wolves. We as a church body, we are here to help protect one another from bad theology. Scripture tells us that we take every loose thought and bad theology and crush it under the obedience of God's Word. And so we, as your spiritual shepherds, we want to keep you safe from the wolves of bad theology out there. Another thing is, biblically, fellowship is so important. It's a place for you to belong. It helps you grow. Spiritually, it nourishes you. It, it, it fulfills you. I think one of the things during COVID-19 that so many of us have been learning is that isolation is devastating. And so we need people physically, emotionally, spiritually to help us grow in all those aspects. It also helps with doctrine and discipline if necessary. It helps us grow through the ministry of life, healing, and health by the members of the body. I've said this time and time and time again. I need you and you need me. And so we as the church, we need to be in partnership together. Because as I as the pastor, as Pastor Will, as the associate, and all of our staff working together to help you grow spiritually, the truth of the matter is we need you as well. We know that there's giftings and talents in you that we need in our lives. That's right. what makes it a partnership. One thing's for sure, too, we're just two people. And when we have our team, we're still just five or six people or seven or eight people. We're never going to be complete without everybody. Right. Without everybody. It takes the whole body to love the community. It takes the whole body to make us better. In reality, there, we're, you're never going to find a perfect church, and you're never going to find a perfect pastor, associate pastor, nothing like that. But it's through this sense of unity that we are being perfected because now we get everybody's point of view. They get everybody's uh, view from their heart. I mean, all that stuff. Everybody has uh, value, and it's not. we're not in this to create value. We're in here to draw the value out Right. What is it about you that helps us? And what and so you could see what it is about us that helps you. One of the things that I firmly believe with all my heart is that Journey Church is made up with some amazing people. It's why I can honestly say that Journey Church is an amazing church. And like Pastor Will said, no, we're not perfect. Uh, yes, we have flaws because the church is people That's and right. we are flawed. But by partnering together, by being unified together towards the cause of what God has called us to, even our flaws God can use to help make a better impact in our culture, in our world. So instead of staying away from a church that's not perfect, dive into that church and help make it become what God's called it to be. Now, one cannot expect to receive all the blessings and benefits of God's church when it comes when one is not willing to be committed to the responsibilities of partnership. And so we try to make it as biblical, easy as possible. James said when he was pastoring the first church, let's not make it hard for people to come to Christ. And so we believe the same thing. We don't want to make it hard for you to become a partner of Journey Church. So, so we do confirmation by verbal agreement. So whereas a believer enters into a covenant relationship and willing to receive these privileges and assumes responsibilities and accepts the discipline of the local church, it's where we come together as partnership. It's where scripture tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, may the God of all grace make you perfect, watch this word, establish strengthen and settle you. So we want to encourage you that if you've been coming, being a part, logging in, Journey Church for any amount of time, 
we, we kind of think three months is a good opportunity for you to kind of see the nitty gritty of us, as well as the, the good and the bad and experience family life. So if you've been coming for the last few months, then we encourage you to take that step and do what scripture says, settle, get settled in your spirit to make Journey Church mm-hmm. your church family. Because as a verbal agreement of partnership, we want to make sure that All of the functioning parts of the body are working together. An ear, a hand. We we as as a body, we need more people that can be an ear, be a hand, be a leg, be an arm. And so as these parts function together, we wholeheartedly believe we become who God's created us to be. That's right. And so in verbal agreement, we ask that you as part of the church, that you say in your spirit, and walk it out that you will be a giver, that you will be a server, that you will be a minister, that you will share your faith with other people, that you'll take it upon yourself to study God's Word. It's where we want to encourage you not just to rely solely on Sunday morning, that while Pastor Will, myself, or any of our staff pastors are bringing God's Word, that's most beneficial but also take it upon yourself to study God's Word. That's right. That you also will seek to be a blessing to others. Not just bless others, be a blessing to others. That's, that's the big key right there. That's, that's going from church membership to church partner, partnership right there, being a blessing. So uh, you need to settle this and settle into the, into the local body and to strengthen it. You need to bring what you have to the table to help strengthen it to be established in the faith and to exercise love and grace to the rest of the church family. This is one thing. This is what you would be committing to. You'd be saying that to yourself. Say, I will settle. I will commit. But one cannot expect to receive all the blessings and the benefits of the Lord's church when one is not willing to be committed to the responsibilities of partnership. This is so true. When we're talking about this, a family of God, the family, it's no different than your family at home. Everybody must be committed for the win of the team, for the win of the family. And that's what we're asking right here. So we hope these last three weeks of hearing our vision, mission, and purpose, of hearing how we think in terms of rooms that edify discipleship to make us more like Jesus, will help give you a complete picture and take the final step of being a partner of Journey Church. Right now, Pastors John and Crystal are online with you and able to answer any questions. And what we want you to do, if you're willing and ready to make that step, is send us a message through Facebook Messenger. You can send it to me directly. You can send it to our church. And we would love to connect with you and introduce you and welcome you as part of the Journey Church family. I hope this morning, as we have shared our hearts that the one thing that you hear above everything else is that we love you. That's right. Our focus is to love God and love others. And while we're not perfect, we are going to do our best to do what Jesus said. So again, thank you so much for taking time and letting us into your house. And we look forward to hearing from you in making Journey Church part of your church family. And God bless you and thank you. And we hope to see you soon at 425 Millbrook Drive, our live campus, where we could enjoy family. Amen. God bless you. And before we log off this live stream, allow me to share a little bit of my heart as your pastor. One of the things that grieves my heart to see the American church move away from biblical foundations And we here at Journey Church, we're committed to keeping God's Word the center of how we function. Now, with that being said, I know that we are in a most unprecedented time as changes are forever happening in our culture. But we must continue as Christians to make God's Word our standard and everything else secondary. We also know that in changing times, we must adapt to the changes that are upon us. And so one of the things that we are doing as a church is we are treating our online campus, Journey Church at Home, 
as its own campus. Meaning, we're talking to you directly, not the entire body at 425 Millbrook Drive. And while we have been passionate about compelling and propelling you to come to the campus, we also know in this time of separation and social distancing that sometimes that's not possible. And so we don't want you to feel beat up and abused while we encourage you to do what the Bible says. No, instead we want you to take the next step in online campus, which means sitting on the couch cannot be the end result. We have to move into a deeper connection online, which is why this morning our online campus pastors, John and Crystal, are going to be setting up a Facebook room for you to log in connect. They're going to type out some information, links on what you can do to turn your phone into a gathering place to meet face to face with one another. Now, I know there's a couple of drawbacks. If you're watching this on YouTube, obviously you're not going to have that ability unless you go over to Facebook and join our Journey Church at Home group. If you're watching this on our Journey Church page, again, you need to go over and join our Journey Church at Home group. And for those of you who are a part and watching on our Journey Church at Home group, we want you to engage. Turn your phone, turn your laptop, turn your iPad, whatever it is you have from a viewing device into a connecting device. And as they connect with you face to face, we want to take an opportunity while we're meeting in homes all across America, all across Hopkinsville, that we can connect with you. Say hello, pray, hear each other's needs because in order to take online campus to the next level, we're going to have to move from consumerism to contributing. And as you hear the needs of the people who are meeting in homes this morning, that you can connect with pastors John and Crystal as they develop plans and strategies to take food to another family, to pray for other individuals, to meet the needs of those that are in need at our church, because you are part of Journey Church, that we as a church can do a better job at facilitating individuals like yourself that are having to spend a time and a season at home. Again, I hope you hear my heart as we fully understand this opportunity as a church to step up and meet a need. And we want to do that, but it's only going to happen by partnering together. So I hope you hear my heart as your pastor. And this morning, as pastors John and Crystal get ready to meet online, please don't use the excuse of, oh, well, my makeup's not done, or I, I don't look good to be able to be seen. Listen, our philosophy from day one has always been wear clothes to church. So whether you're in your robe, in shorts and a tank top, you're uh, PJs, we want you to engage because like I've said before, and I will continue to say, sitting on a couch is not engagement. But if you have to sit on your couch to view our online campus, then take the next step and turn that phone, turn that laptop into a device that we can meet face to face because we're going to use God's word as the standard not the culture make us the standard. Amen? I hope you hear my heart. I love you, church. Can't wait to see you in person. But until then, join the Journey Church at Home Room right now. Thank you for joining us at Journey Church. Our hope is that these messages challenge your soul, equip your spirit, and give you a hope for your future. We look forward to doing life with you. Now, let's go this week and be the church in our community as we focus on loving God and loving others. See you next week.